Historically, I've, I've never been an endurance athlete. I played soccer for my whole life and baseball and, um, you know, wrestling and weightlifting and stuff like that. But it, it wasn't until I, I started doing an endurance sport that these symptoms came on. Intermittently, I would get mild to moderate chest pains as my heart rate started climbing. But as time went on, it just got worse and worse. My chest would just start kind of tightening up. I would get shortness of breath. I had no clue what the problem was. I just knew it was, it was serious enough to where I couldn't, I couldn't keep going. John has the most common genetic cardiovascular disorder that we see called something called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In the United States today, when you say someone has a cardiomyopathy, you think of a heart muscle that's not squeezing well. With hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it's completely different. It's actually almost a heart that's working too hard. Its ability to contract is normal, but the muscle is thicker. The danger with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy arises from certain rhythm abnormalities that can occur with stress. As I started reading more about it and, and learning more about HCM, I was, I was really nervous that I would just kind of drop dead one day uh, running around. At the University of Virginia, we've been recently accredited as what's called a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy center of excellence. We can provide genetic counseling, exercise physiology, stress testing, echocardiography, electrocardiography, rhythm monitoring, anything we want to do right here in the clinic. And in John's case, we actually brought his training cycle in to make sure that nothing unusual was happening when he was riding his bike at a pretty quick pace or pushing really hard. As it turned out, he was really performing at a very high level. And the follow-up of the patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is vitally important. I see them at least every six months to once a year. And we do surveillance analysis to make sure rhythm abnormalities aren't occurring or symptoms aren't being overlooked. You can't ever assume something is going to be static and unchanging. And so you have to be on top of it. John's situation was very complicated and there were a lot of fluctuations along the way. A lot of things we had to talk through to get him into a comfortable place where he was living and exercising and feeling good because he's got his children, he's got a family, that's the most important thing to him, and he doesn't want to do anything that's going to put that in jeopardy, and I think he's found a really nice balance with that. I really have uh, maintained the same lifestyle I had before the diagnosis. I just take a salt tablet and drink about two liters of water two hours prior to exercise, and that in essence would uh, pump up the blood volume, which would enlarge the heart and allow enough blood flow. Every time I've done that, I haven't had any symptoms. The treatment I've gotten here so far has been amazing. You know, everyone's been accommodating, kind. Dr. Battle, uh, he and I hit it off right from the start. I could tell he was really invested in me and, uh, and recovering from this thing. He's given me my life back.